I just wanted to show you guys. This is, man, let me get back. This is our big loquat tree. It's probably about, I don't know, 20 years old. But what I wanted to tell you was, under the tree, they just multiply everywhere. I've got them everywhere. And I pick them, some of them I pick them if I can get down there. But I put them in pots. I've got them all around the yard in pots. And yes, they do get blooms on them when they're small. I was shocked by that. But anyways, I've got those all around the yard. I thought, hey, it's free plants. I'll get money in the spring from them. So, but it looks like we're blooming again on the loquat tree. But I need to trim some of the limbs on the ground. But anything that I transplant or anything, I put them under the, the loquat tree. It's like my timeout stage. It's after you repot them and they need to be in the shade. And then once they adjust, then I'll... I move them somewhere else and then here's my this is just a piece of my alocasias and elephant ears I multiplied them and got the seeds out of the pot and planted them but if I took each one out they would double in size extremely fast I just haven't had the time and then there's my um, mango tree from seed and then back here I have uh, an Australian finger lime. I have two red ones there, and the one in the red pot is my green one. And they look like little rose bushes. You see, I don't know when the bloom time is. If they had been in the ground, they would have multiplied so fast, but I can't plant anything back here because there's too many things underground. So I keep them in pots. But anyways, I don't know when they bloom or if they bloom on new wood or old wood. I don't know. It's my first year, so I'm excited about them. And this is my citrus alley here. It's all my cuttings that I did or seeds. These are my avocados. And they're branching out pretty good. And then down there is another Meyer lemon that I grew from cutting. And then some more citrus cuttings, some more figs. And then these are all my papayas growing. By, I'll put them in the hoop house. By spring, they'll be ready to put out. But these are also my tons of plumerias. We had a hurricane last year. And I drove around different towns going through people's brush piles that they were throwing, you know, debris and limbs from their yard in piles by the road for the garbage to pick up. So plumerias are very expensive, especially when they have multiple branches like that. Um, and color. Color is a big difference in price that you're gonna get them for. If you get a normal like light pinkish white, you're not gonna get much for it, but with a branched one, and if it turns out to be a darker color, you'll get more money. Of course, this one with three branches will be more money. And then I've got a pomelo tree down here that really hasn't done, I don't know, it seemed like it was so much happier in the partial shade because it's getting burnt and everything else in my Black Eyed Susans. But this is another one of the plumerias. This one next year I will put in the ground. I've got like, I would say, 30 plumerias. And they'll go in the hoop house also, but I want to be able to sell them in spring. But I really would like to know what colors they are. But if I can't figure out the color, I'm selling it because I just can't keep up with all of them. The other plumerias I have, I planted in the ground. And they grew really, really good and fast this year. And here's my cherry, Acerola cherry, Barbados cherry. But... The plumerias I planted in the ground grew beautiful and fast, so whatever I don't sell, I'll probably plant in the yard this year. I don't know. But this is going to be my Hawaiian section. It'll be Hawaii next year, but there's no way I'm going to do anything with Hawaii this year. It's got to wait till spring, So, because I still didn't even get finished with Japan. But yeah... That's my collection. Okay, thank you. Toodles.